Right, I'm doing this video then uh, because of a request from Mina George. And the request was to have a look at a question to do with heat and the rate of heat loss for the latent heat of fusion uh, in an old exam paper. So we'll run through that. What we'll do is we'll have a little bit of a look at change of state and latent heat and heating. And then we'll move on and have a look at the question at the end. So let's begin that now. Now let's begin. Okay, so we start, of course, with solids, liquids, and gases. Now, a solid has a fixed volume and a fixed shape. And the molecules in a solid are very tightly packed together. A liquid, on the other hand, does not have a fixed shape. It takes up the shape of the container, but it does have a fixed volume. And... The molecules in liquid are still quite tightly packed together, but there's a few gaps in between them now. So most of the molecules are still packed together, certainly above 50%, but there are now gaps for the molecules to move into. And a gas, it changes shape to fit the container, and it also changes its volume. It doesn't have a fixed volume, it fills up the container. And we reflect that whenever we do the little diagram showing the molecules of gas by having these large spaces in between them. So what we're going to start by having a look at is what happens to send something from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. Let's look at that now. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm doing a little basic diagram here with temperature and time. I'm not putting any units onto it because I'm not specifying uh, the temperature that's being done. It's more a generic graph. What you tend to see Whenever you see one of these graphs, you'll see an object that starts off as a solid. And it's being heated up. And the temperature is increasing. Then it reaches this point where it starts to change from a solid into a liquid. And at that point, the temperature stops rising. Until all of the solid has changed into a liquid. So what's happened? Well, here, all the molecules are tightly packed together. And in this period of time here, you're putting in enough energy in order to break some of the molecular bonds. So what does that mean? We've gone from having a solid into a liquid, and we're still adding energy into it while the temperature starts increasing again. Now, the second line, does not have to have the same gradient as the first line. I'm going to draw it. There we go. It's a different gradient. There we are. And that continues right up until the liquid starts to boil. And it's changing state from a liquid into a gas. And what happens then? The temperature remains constant up until all of the liquid has changed into a gas. And then the temperature increases again. And it continues on. All right. So we start off with our tightly packed molecules. Now there's some spaces in between the molecules when we're dealing with the liquid. Still very difficult to compress, however. And when we're dealing with the gas, all the molecular bonds have been broken. So what we're dealing with then is the gas molecules are separate. So the molecules have been separated. Start with this first section here, where energy is going in to break some of the molecular bonds. Then we go to this section here, where energy is being put in to break the remaining molecular bonds. So all of the remaining molecular bonds have been broken. And that leads up to the point in time when all the molecules have been separated and they're in a gas form. So what we see then is a situation where energy is put in and the molecules move further and further apart. But what's interesting is the same events occur in the opposite order when it cools down. As the gas cools down, it starts to change into a liquid. And it does that at this point over here. It's going from gas to liquid. Then the liquid cools down and that over time will change from a liquid into a solid. And then the solid can continue to cool down. Of course, we've got time on this axis just here. There we are. 
OK, so we see it works the same in reverse. If it's cooling down, it goes through these periods in time where it has to release energy. These are the same points when it's heating up where it has to absorb energy to break the molecular bonds. Here, it has to release energy to reform the molecular bonds. So it's getting rid of all the potential energy that the molecules themselves had. The energy that these sections require, as the name is called, when it's from liquid to gas or gas to liquid, the latent heat of vaporization, which is LV. And here, it's the latent heat of fusion. Why it has those names, I do not know. And that, of course, is LF. There we are. All right, so LV, latent heat of vaporization, is the energy needed per kilogram, or per gram, depending on how it's written. It's the energy needed per kilogram to change state. In this case, from a gas to a liquid or a liquid to a gas. LF is the latent heat of fusion. It's the energy needed to change state again from a solid to a liquid, or if it's cooling down from a liquid to a solid. Now, a key point to notice is I've said it's from a liquid to a gas here and from a solid to a liquid, because what I'm saying is it's the energy that's required, the energy needed. It's equal to the energy that will be given out as it's cooling down, but because it's the energy needed, it's defined as the energy needed per kilogram to change state from liquid to gas for LV, and LF, the energy needed per kilogram to change state from solid to liquid. That's how it's actually defined. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's suppose I have something to heat. Here we go, a big blue ball. I shall label it thing to heat. And I want to change it from a solid to a liquid. And I know the latent heat of fusion is, uh, say, 500 joules per kilogram. Very small number, but that's okay. And I know that this has a mass of 0.2 kilograms. Then the energy required would be given by mass times latent heat of fusion. Why? Because this is per kilogram. And this is the number of kilograms I have. So that would be just 0 0.2 kilograms times 500 joules per kilogram. And of course the kilograms cancel as units. And that would leave us with 100 joules. So I would have to put in 100 joules of energy to melt that, to turn it from a solid to liquid at that temperature. Not to change the temperature once it gets to the point where it's going to melt at the melting temperature. That's when I'd have to put that 100 joules of energy in. And if it was cooling down, that's when that energy would come back out. All right. Well, now we know enough to answer that question. So... Let's give it a try. All right, so this is a CIE exam. It's 0625, paper 43, May 2016. Question three. A test tube containing solid wax is heated by placing it in a beaker of very hot water for several minutes. The solid wax becomes a liquid. State, in terms of molecules, how a solid differs from a liquid. Okay. Well, as we saw in the diagram four, the molecules are very closely packed in the solid. Also, the molecules in a solid can't move around. And you can also say the molecules in a solid have regular positioning, whereas in a liquid, obviously, they don't. B. Explain in terms of molecules why thermal energy must be supplied for a solid to become a liquid. Well, you have to break those molecular bonds. You have to break some of the molecular bonds. OK, so energy is needed to break some molecular bonds. No, I said some here. I didn't say just leave it as molecular bonds, break molecular bonds, because on a very rare occasion they might put that they want to see some in there for the molecular bonds, because obviously you're not breaking all of them, only some of them, to change it from a solid to a liquid. Most of the time, 99% times out of 100, that won't matter. C. The test tube is removed from the hot water and held in a clamp stand. Uh, figure 3.1 shows a test tube and the liquid wax cooling in air. As the wax cools, its temperature is recorded at regular time intervals. And of course, one question to ask is, why is the stopwatch floating? Is it a physics ghost? One hopes not. Figure 3.2 is a temperature time graph for the wax. 
because it's in a test tube it must be a liquid a gas would escape so it's going from a liquid to a solid part one using figure 3.2 determine the melting point of the wax all right well the melting point is the same as the point where it starts to turn from a liquid into a solid at the same time it starts to turn from a solid into a liquid so that is i think 57 degrees Mm, what are the units of this? Yeah, degrees Celsius. That's good. The specific latent heat of fusion of the wax is 210 joules per gram. The test tube contains 50 grams of wax. Right. Using figure 3.2, determine the rate at which wax is losing thermal energy as the wax solidifies. Give your answer in joules per minute. All right. Well, let's look at this. This is already in minutes, so that's a good thing. We can see the length of time that it takes to change from a liquid into a solid. So it starts at eight minutes and it goes up to, ooh, it's an awkward little scale this, isn't it? 12, uh, this is 14 here. So this middle bit here is 15. So between eight and 15 minutes is when it's changing state. So let's just, first of all, put a calculation for the time it takes. So it takes seven minutes. All right. Now, we're being asked to calculate the rate it's losing th internal energy. So we have to find out how much energy is lost. That's just going to be mass times this latent heat of fusion. Now, this is all given in grams, so that's good. We've got a mass of 50 grams multiplied by 210 joules per gram. And that will tell us how much energy is lost in total. And that's 10,500 joules. Okay, so we have to find the rate at which it's being lost. And that's going to be the energy loss divided by the time taken. That's 10,500 joules divided by 7 minutes. And that tells us to lose that amount of energy in 7 minutes. It has to lose 1,500 or 1,500 joules each minute. So there we go. 1,500 joules per minute. All right, there we go. I hope you found that useful and I hope that's answered your question. If you enjoyed that, please feel free to like and subscribe. And you know what? Have a great day.